Ampere's circuit law. We'll start by talking about the experiment that Ampere performed, at least in cartoon form. We'll then talk about the three types of current and combine these concepts to arrive at Ampere's law in integral form. It's then very easy to convert that to differential form. So Ampere performed an experiment. He had a wire, he passed an electrical current through it and observed that there was a magnetic field around that. So observation number one, that there existed a circulating magnetic field around this wire carrying current I. Observation number two, this was a bi-directional thing. If the magnetic field exists around the wire and is changing with respect to time, that can induce a current. Otherwise, if there's a current passing through a wire, that will induce a magnetic field circulating around it. So it worked both ways. And the third observation, if a line integral was performed around that wire, that line integral of the magnetic field would give the total amount of current. So here's really method number one for calculating the current in that wire. It is a line integral of the magnetic field around a closed line. And the path of that line doesn't matter, but a circle might be mathematically convenient. Let's remember that there are actually three types of current. So in order to get total current, we really would have to integrate that total current. But let's expand this into our three types of current. Remember there was conduction current, that's free charges down a wire satisfying Ohm's law. We had free charges through an insulator that followed the continuity of current equation. And then there was displacement current. This is that momentary current that happens as charges are being displaced within a dielectric, bound charges. The free charges are the conduction and the convection current. And we lump those together into a single J term that we see in Maxwell's equations. This displacement current is the time rate of change of the electric flux. So we will simply expand this total electrical current as the current due to free charges plus the current due to the displacement of the charges at the atomic scale. So Ampere circuit law in integral form is simply setting both of these methods equal. And the fact that I'm writing I equals on the outside, that's not part of Ampere circuit law. However, I like to write it there to remind us that this is simply two different ways of calculating the total current through some loop. We can either integrate the magnetic field around some closed contour line, or we can integrate the cross section in that closed contour line, integrate the total electric current, the flux of that total electric current. We can convert the integral form of Ampere's circuit law to differential form by applying Stokes theorem. Let's remember quickly what Stokes theorem is. It's a way of converting a closed contour line integral into a surface integral, integrating a bunch of curls. Well, we just wrote Ampere's circuit law in integral form, and it had a closed contour line integral. Let's apply Stokes' theorem to that and write that as a surface integral of curls. So this line integral of magnetic field now becomes a surface integral integrating the curls of the magnetic field. So this is where we were from the previous slide. And what we see is that we have two surface integrals we have the same dot ds in both of these equations, and they're giving us the same answer. That has to mean that these two terms that we're integrating are equal. And so when we set those equal, we arrive at Ampere circuit law in differential form. Let's try to visualize this. And we really have two things happening at the same time. We can have a magnetic field circulating around a current where these are 
due to free charges. And here I'm drawing it through a conductor. And we've already seen this animation. This was in the beginning when we talked about Ampere's experiment. However, we can also have a time changing electric flux. And we'll see that we also get a magnetic field oscillating around that. Now these two are behaving a little bit different. A steady current will give us a steady magnetic field. However, a steady electric flux will not give us any magnetic field. This magnetic flux has to be changing with respect to time. The more rapidly it's changing, the stronger that magnetic field. And of course, whether that's changing upward or downward, that will change the directionality of the magnetic field as well. So they behave a little bit different. But in general, we have magnetic fields circulating around both currents and time-changing electric flux.